Hey y'all, welcome to Cooking with Miss Holt. I am a retired high school home ag teacher and I love cooking with my students and now I enjoy cooking with you all. Today we are gonna be making lasagna and the recipe comes from a cookbook that I wrote back in the fall to benefit high school scholarships because I just watched my kids struggle for you know the almost 20 years I taught high school about with, with how expensive college was. So I decided to use my talents to help that cause. And so I wrote this cookbook last fall and gave uh, out four scholarships at different high schools in my town this past May, and I'm gonna do it again next year. So anyway, that the recipe's coming from this book, and I'll talk more about that later. But in the book, um, there is a recipe and it's called the Smith's Lasagna. And how that came about is that we have some really sweet friends that I have known my entire life named the Smiths. And our kids went to school together and grew up together and on and on and on. Well, one day um, their sweet daughter Nikki called me and she said, would you please make me a big dish of lasagna to give my dad on Father's Day like that. I want that to be our Father's Day lunch. And so, of course, I was more than happy to do that and it went over really well and since then, I've done several more trays of lasagna for them. Uh, they have three adult children and uh, those children have spouses and they have grandchildren and, and on and on. And so anyway, it's gone over really well. For holiday dinners for them so in my book I called it the Smith's lasagna because uh, they are precious to me and I have made it for them probably more uh, than anybody else and I'm just happy to do it so this is what we're going to do today all right let me turn you down so you can kind of see what we've got going here all right so I'm going to tell you starting out that I make this dish based on what size dish I have. Now, I have to admit when it's just me and I'm flying along, you know, I, I may not uh, I may not do the exact same measurements that I do here, but, um, but I am today. This is specific for this pan, but if you wanna do like an eight by eight, you're gonna have to cut it in half. And if you wanna do a bigger pan, then of course, you know, you're gonna have to increase that. But um, it doesn't have to be an exact science like baking a cake. Now, you know, we all know cakes and cookies, it has to be exact. But, uh, but this uh, is a 15 by 10. I measured it for you all before we started so that you could kind of get a, a concept. This is my spatula. You can kind of see that's um, in relation to how big my spatula is. Okay, so, and this is a heavy ceramic dish and I have made lasagna in those aluminum pans that we take things to family reunions in and all that. And it can be done, but to me, it just bakes better in a heavy glass or ceramic pan. And of course it's gotta be deep. Um, and this one looks like it's about three and a half, four inches deep. So it's, it's deeper than two inches. So anyway, um, now I will also tell you, this is something that you can make up one night and put it in the refrigerator and cook it when you get home from work the next night. As soon as you walk in the door, you know, put it in the stove and um, then, you know, sit down and read your mail or read your emails, visit with your children, you know, whatever, and then it'll be done after a while. So this is not the kind of, you know, lasagna where we cook the sauce all day. I love that, I love it, love it, love it, but a lot of us don't have time to do that. So this is, Something, as, as far as lasagna goes, it's quick. It's a quick um, quick lasagna rather than cooking the sauce all day. All right, so I use uh, Prego Chunky sauce because I like the chunky vegetables in it. Kind of a good way to get your kids to eat their vegetables too. So what I did is I poured about half a cup, maybe two thirds of the cup of the sauce in the bottom. And that just keeps the noodles from sticking to the bottom. And I'll also tell you, I'm using uh, this Barilla Oven Ready Lasagna. Now, um, I have used other brands before, and you can, um, but this is my favorite. I've just tried several, and I kind of land on one thing once I figure out what I like, and so this is what I've landed on. 
This is not the kind that you boil. Okay, you don't have to boil and pull the noodles out and they break and all of that. So it's called oven ready. So if you get another brand, just make sure you get oven ready. Also, I'll switch places here for just a second and tell you once I get all this explained, then we'll, uh, we'll just start layering it up. But this is two pounds of ground beef that I cooked, drained, and um, actually I cooked it last night and then I refrigerated it overnight. So all I had to do today was mix in my sauce. I salted and peppered it um, a little bit when it was cooking and then of course I drained off all the oil and then I salted and peppered it just a little bit more today because some of that's gonna go out with your oil. And you know, I know some people have to use uh, 937 or 9010 for health reasons and that's okay, and you could certainly use turkey with this if you wanted to, but I think to get the best flavor, you probably need to use 80-20, um, ground chuck, ground sirloin, you know, ground beef, what's labeled ground beef, but it's up to you, and like I said, you can do whatever. You can do turkey, lean, or 80-20, all up to you. So I just stirred that in here. So this is two pounds of ground beef, um, cooked, drained, and I used two jars, and this is, let me see if I can find the ounces. This is 23.75 um, ounces, so about 24 ounces. And like I said, you can certainly use the sauce of your choice, but I like the chunky because I like the vegetables and the little chunky vegetables that it's got in it. And then the next thing, and I know this is, this is gonna be a, a source of disagreement with some people and that's okay but in here I have cottage cheese I have three cups of cottage cheese and I have um, two cups of sour cream and you can kind of do that in whatever ratio you like and I will also tell you that I have used cream cheese you can put a block of cream cheese in here instead of the sour cream now I have used um, ricotta. I've used ricotta several times and I just personally don't like it. It's very dry to me and I know that's just terrible, you know, according to some people, but I say do whatever you like. So if you like ricotta, you can certainly do that. But um, this is uh, 24 ounces, we'll just say it that way. This is 24 ounces of cottage cheese and um, I think it's better if you don't get the no fat, low fat, just get the regular. And then this was a 16 ounce container of sour cream. And I put salt and pepper in here and it just keeps it from being bland. I just think that that works. And then of course over here, I have a bowl of mozzarella cheese grated up and you can add Parmesan if you want to. Um, you can certainly grate your own a mozzarella. You can use the mozzarella in the slices if you want to. Let's get this where you can see it. You can use the mozzarella that comes in slices. You can do it however you wanna do it. But let me do one layer of this and then I'll layer the rest of it up and not make you wait while I do that. So um, these noodles just go just like this. And it's kind of like a puzzle you're gonna to have to break some, I'm sure, to get them you know, in the edges, and that's okay. So you just can lay them just like that and just sort of make a puzzle out of it. And if it's not exactly perfect, it's okay. All right, and so then what you wanna do is you just wanna put a little bit of your meat sauce along through here and the liquid in the sauce, which is another good reason to put some on the bottom, the liquid is what causes your noodles to cook. The water, because there's a good bit of water in all sauces, whether homemade or, or jarred, because tomatoes are mainly water, they're 90% water. So um, the liquid in the sauce is what causes your um, noodles to cook. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to cover every little nook and cranny because on the next level, there's gonna be more. And we're gonna do this, you know, two or three times. So then you just take your cottage cheese and sour cream or ricotta or, um, 
like I said, you can do cottage cheese. You could do that same container of cottage cheese and put a block of cream cheese in it. I've done that before and it's really good. Um, it's just, you know, whatever you want to do. And it, like I said, we're fixing to layer all this up, cover it up and it's going to bake. So it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I said, I know that some people are going to be upset that we're not using ricotta and that's certainly okay. You can use it. It's just a little bit dry to me. Okay, and then you just want to put on your mozzarella, sprinkle that around, just like that. Okay, now, and then we're just gonna repeat the process. So I'm gonna stop right here and finish layering this up and then I'll show you the top when I get to the top. And um, so then we'll proceed from there, but I won't make you wait on me while I layer this up. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, we're just about done and I purposely left a little bit of this undone so that you could just see what it looks like. On the top layer, I make sure that I put noodles, uh, cottage cheese mixture, and I put meat last. It really doesn't matter. You can do it in whatever order, but I just think it's prettier to have the meat presentation on the top. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just finishing out with mozzarella cheese. And of course, everybody loves lots of cheese. That's the best part. And you can mix in some Parmesan, some shredded provolone would be good. And you can just kind of take your hand and just um, smooth it out there along the edge. Now, let me wipe my hands off right here. Let me grab a you notice that I use red bowls today. Um, I bought those on clearance from Williams Sonoma years ago. Um, and I like it for anything with tomato sauce because it's not gonna dye your bowls red or orange or whatever. I've also been using a red spatula today um, for the same reason. I've got probably three red spatulas and because I got tired of my white spatulas years ago getting dyed pink. So I just buy red from the get-go now. Also, you wanna make sure that your spatulas, speaking of spatulas, you wanna make sure that they're heat proof. Generally, they're heat proof up to about 400 degrees. So um, if you're uh, stirring something in a, in a skillet or whatever, then um, it's not gonna melt. So I think, let me make sure we're straight here. So I think that that's everything. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover this and put it in a 375 degree oven for 45 minutes covered. And then I'm gonna uncover it and bake it maybe 20, 30 minutes, however long it takes in your oven for the cheese to melt. But you will see, it'll be bubbly around the edges. And I would say this would conservatively easily feed 10 to 12 people. Now, you know, you have to think if it's teenage boys at your house this summer or a group of ladies at your house for lunch, you know, you kind of have to take that into consideration. But, um, but I would say on the average, you know, about 10 to 12, 10 to 12 people. So I'm gonna get this baked and then I'll come back in a minute when it comes out of the oven hot and I will show it to you. Be back in a little bit. Okay, y'all, our lasagna just came out of the oven. It took it about an hour, hour and five minutes, and I was trying to get a video of it uh, bubbling a little bit, but uh, I think it's kind of uh, begin to cool right now. But anyway, this is what it looks like when it comes out. You can certainly put it under the broiler for just a second if you want to uh, if you want to brown the cheese a little bit more, but it was, it's, it's been bubbling around the edges for the last 15 minutes. You can kind of see there where it was bubbling up. So I know that it's, um, it's heated through. Of course, that's what you're trying to do because your ground beef and all of that is, um, is already cooked. So, and again, this came from my cookbook, uh, that I wrote to fund, um, high school scholarships and the cookbooks are, $20 and 450 shipping. And this is called the Smith's um, lasagna because I make it for our sweet 
friends, the Smiths, uh, quite a bit because they have a big family. Um, but anyway, thank you for joining me today. And um, if you want a cookbook, just message me and I'll tell you how I can get it to you. And um, thank you so much and I will see you soon.